Why is it so dang hard to find a therapist who takes insurance? If you've ever been in therapy or know someone who's been in therapy, chances are you know that finding a mental health care specialist in network can feel impossible. We spoke to hundreds of psychologists, psychiatrists, and therapists from across the country. Each provider said they faced a moment in which they had to leave their network. Let's get into why. So 44 providers we spoke to said they left their network after insurance companies questioned whether their patient's therapy was even necessary. Beth Green, a psychologist from San Diego said, fresh grief issues like the death of the spouse. They would still say things like, when will you be terminating treatment? More than 100 providers we spoke to said they left their insurance networks after having to spend countless hours appealing insurer mistakes, waiting in customer service lines, and generally getting tangled in red tape. Kendra F. Dunlap, a therapist in Berkeley, California, said, Coding errors resulted in unpaid claims, and I spent one to two hours every week to get it resolved. It led to a lot of frustration and took time away from clients. More than 130 providers said they left insurance networks because of low reimbursement rates. Shayna Helm, a therapist from Chicago, said, I actually had to get a whole daytime job as a school social worker because I really cannot afford to rely on insurance companies to pay my bills. Nearly 60 providers told ProPublica they left networks after insurers delayed payments or tried to take money back. Sarah Mildrum, a therapist in Wyndham, Maine, said, I was in the place of having to tell my clients they owed me $15,000 or that I would have to eat it. And I ate it. Rhonda Stewart-Jones, a therapist from Alexandria, Virginia, said, I am out $20,000 plus, and so it is a very, very big deal. I continued paying my staff, but I was not taking a salary myself. All in all, our interviews underscore how U.S. insurers have played way too big a role in mental health care, with little pushback from regulators or lawmakers. In the coming weeks, we'll be featuring mental health care providers and their personal anecdotes, patient experiences, guides for what mental health protections exist in your state, and more. So stay tuned. And if you are a mental health care provider who's experienced this, if you intimately know how the mental health care system operates or try to navigate it yourself, we would love to hear from you. Head to the link in bio, email us here, or comment below with your experience.